Welcome to Kelly's Art Throb. I'm Kelly and today we're going to prepare a sketchbook for that fun and funky sketchbook project that I've been showing on the channel where you poke holes through it. Normally you want to use the best quality paper but today we want to use the cheap paper. I'm using the Strathmore 290 pound paper and this is one project where you actually want to use the cheap paper. I'm going to use six sheets of paper for this. You can use four to six. I like to use six any more than that and it becomes hard to make into one signature. And if you've ever made a book, you know that a signature is each section of pages folded together. Well, we're only going to have one. So all the pages are going to fit inside each other. And we're going to fold it with the least resistance where it's the easiest to fold. That means you're going with the grain of the paper and that's what we want to do. It can be tempting to fold it the other direction if we like the size of it, but it's really important to do it along the grain. And then you want to crease each page. I'm using a bone folder, but if you don't have one, you don't need one, you can use um, the edge of a pencil or you can use the bottom of a spoon. You don't have to buy anything special. So just fold each page the same way as you did the first one. And then we'll decide whether or not we're going to do a landscape or a portrait size. Now, if you want to do a landscape, that is wider than it is long. So you would just cut these in half. In that case, you could have just used three sheets. See, this is a landscape orientation. I decided I wanted a portrait orientation, and that is narrower than it is long. So that's why I use six. If you were going to do landscape, you could just do three sheets. So now I'm just going to put one page inside the previous page. So it'll be one section. Think of it as if this were printed and you were going to staple it like a pamphlet, like maybe a directory or something like that, but we're going to sew it. So just insert one folded sheet inside the previous one, and then you'll have one section or one signature. Now you can use an awl or you can use a large safety pin, and I'm showing you how to use a safety pin because if you don't do, if you don't make a lot of books or you don't, you're not in the habit or practice of making your own sketchbooks, um, I want to show you how to do it with, with what you probably already have at home. Um, now, since I'm using a safety pin, I'm separating them into three sheets. So I'll punch one hole in the middle and I kind of keep it folded so that I can make sure it's going through the crease and not some other part of the page. We want it right there in that crease. So you do one in the middle and then you do one about a half an inch or so from the top and from the bottom. And it's pretty easy to do. And then that becomes your guide for the other three sheets. So you just put them back in just like you had them before and you use the holes that you already pressed in the first three pages and do the exact same thing again um, just as if you were doing it for the first time. Now it's time to sew and you just want to make sure that your thread is approximately twice the length of the spine with a little extra for knots. If you're using regular sewing thread, then you would double the thread. Mine's a little thicker, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have a single thread. Sometimes when I'm using a single thread, I have a problem where um, as I'm pulling the needle through, I'll lose the thread off the needle and have to re-thread it. So if you're going to use a single thread and you don't want that to happen, Basically what you can do is you can take the tip of the needle and go in between the two twists of the thread and then pull it through and it'll keep it from coming off your needle while you're sewing. Now we're going to make the pamphlet stitch. I like to go in from the outside into the 
inside because I don't like a knot on the inside of my pages. I like it on the outside. So go in from the outside middle hole and if you have a little trouble with it, just go back to the inside and poke the hole from the inside and then go back in from the outside again. That's sometimes the holes are just a little bit hard to line up. Once you get that part in, you're going to leave a little bit of a tail and you can see that's where you're going to tie the final knot. So just leave enough to tie and then you're going to go from the inside to the outside on the top of the spine in the set in the top hole and then pull it pull it firm not too tight and pull it in the direction away from the middle then you're going to go from the outside to the inside on the bottom hole and again if you're having trouble with it just go from the inside and poke the hole and line them up. Sometimes it's harder to go from the outside to the inside. I don't know why, but just do that and you'll be fine. And then again, you're going to pull, pull it through and tighten it a little bit, going the direction away from the middle. That way you don't tear your holes because uh, you don't want to do that either. Now, finally, what you're going to do is you're going to um, go from the inside to the outside on that middle hole there. This one's the last one you have to poke through. So I got a little out of frame there because I was trying to get it close enough so you could see. And then you can, you can um, cut off the little other tail. I tie a square knot and I do it three times. Just make sure that um, the tail on the on your right hand is always behind okay and then you'll have a square knot and again I always do it three times instead of just two and once you get those tails tied together you can trim them pretty short and you know they're not going to go anywhere because that square knot's pretty secure and then there's your pamphlet stitch and there's no knot on the inside of your sketchbook it's on the outside and if you decide to glue a cover to this that knot is going to be hidden and you'll never see it you could do this with different paper too um, you know you just have to use the number of pages that work for it it'd be great for studies or just taking along I really do like these little sketchbooks they're pretty awesome Okay, now that the sketchbook is prepared, we're going to put some background on each one of these pages and splashes of color, uh, just whatever you want to put as a background for everything else that's going to come later. I've got some catch paper in between the pages just because I know that this is going to, we're going to have puddles of, of watercolor on here. And if a little bit gets on the previous or the following page, it's not tragic, but I know I'm going to appreciate a little bit of care in the, that I do now in the future. So um, you can't really make a mistake. If you, if you get some paint from this page on another page, it's okay. Um, the genius of using cheap paper is whatever happens on this paper it's going to be more exaggerated and all the things that we normally don't want um, in our art like the cauliflowers and we're just going to take that and it's going to become the inspiration for whatever happens the evolution of the design that comes from these books and you know taking something and dragging wet paint through the background just literally be kind of like a kindergartner just have fun with these pages don't worry too much um, and you can use really cheap supplies too if you don't have expensive watercolor paper or you're a beginner and you've just got 
you know, the stuff that you're starting out with, or if you've just got your kids' old supplies, like the Prang and the Crayola and all that, go ahead and use it on this. It'll work. Just make sure it's nice and concentrated. It's good to try out some new things too, like all the things that the kids try in elementary school, like taking something sharp and going across the paper to make ruts in the paper and make lines, or using salt, whatever you wanna try, go ahead and try it on this. This is part of that experimental process too that's just fun, have fun with this. Okay, now I'm going to tell you guys a story of something that happened to me recently. Actually, it happened on April 1st, April Fool's Day. But first, I've got to give you a little bit of a backstory. Um, this actually really kind of shook me up. I am, I bet you guys have dreams like this too. They're sort of recurring dreams. And when you wake up, you don't even really remember the dream but the next time you have it, you know you've had that dream before and it's familiar to you. Well, I have one specific dream that it's filled with, I, I wouldn't call it a nightmare, but it's filled with um, anxiety. And it's basically kind of like the uh, like a dream of uncanny valley, even more than most dreams can be but it's filled with foreboding and just like insecurity and tension and uh, nervousness so what happens is i'm in like a downtown area someplace that i have been to before and i know but it's somehow unfamiliar, like they've changed things or things have moved or they're not there anymore or, you know, um, you know how sometimes places can feel different at different times of the year or depending on what you're doing down there and how distracted you are. But um, I'm downtown and I'm walking for blocks and blocks and blocks and there's a task I've got to do or someone I have to meet and I'm pressed for time, time is getting late and I need to get there. Time is, time is of the essence. And I'm not sure if I'm on the right street, that kind of thing. And for whatever reason, I don't happen to have my phone and navigation. Um, so I'm walking toward wherever I'm supposed to go and I get to it and um, it's the right place and it looks very unfamiliar. I mean, it's familiar, but not familiar. And um, it looks kind of like, I mean, not to, not to be over dramatic, but it feels like a disaster area. And I have to go up this long flight of steps by long I don't mean like you know the Taj Mahal or something or I don't know like the steps at it's just a lot of steps for going into an entrance for a temporary entrance and the steps are really steep and it's like you go up like a whole story of these temporary steps which is really uh, it's just weird it's like, I, why are these, why is this like this? And so I go up the steps and I get to the threshold and there's this wrought iron arch and it doesn't appear to be attached to anything. It's just like freestanding and you have to go through the arch and then there's like a bridge and there's only a, like a rail or a rope or something on one side the other side is open and it's a long way down there's nothing underneath it it's like a you know it's kind of like those it's just a rope bridge kind of and it's not very long it's only you know maybe three feet but it's very disorienting so you go th and you get to the threshold on the other side of this bridge 
and you have to go downstairs and it's like a split level so like if you go down to this one landing and you go veer off one direction it's like a food court and it's real noisy and there's a lot of activity and um, a lot of people and a lot of traffic and a lot going on and then you go um, down some more steps to another landing and it's like an empty hospital waiting room and then you go and it's just deserted and then you go someplace and it's just something different at every landing and I can never find the person I'm supposed to meet and that's usually when I wake up so that's the dream and keep in mind I don't remember that I've had this dream I, it's completely out of my mind so on the 1st of April we're meeting friends that night and we're going to a restaurant that I know where it is um, on the website I know what it looks like and but one of my friends who's supposed to meet us there said you know I don't think I want I don't think I can go uh, I was looking on the website and there's like there's construction around it and there's no parking you have to park blocks off so I went and looked at the website and I'm like I'm game I haven't seen these friends for well some of them I haven't seen in over a year and so I'm really game to go and I said, well, I'll just pick you up. We'll go together um, and it'll be okay. We'll, we'll get there half an hour early and we'll scout the place out. We'll find a good place to park. So we go and there's no parking. The parking lot has been completely um, bulldozed up and they're like huge. And by huge, I mean like a parking space size of asphalt and concrete just jarred up at angles rough angles it's like they started to demolish it and didn't finish it and um there's like this rinky dink chain link fence it's not rinky dink i'm sure it meets code or whatever but it looks like it looks like a straight up disaster zone it looks very disorganized and so we're driving slowly by we drive by a couple times and the next time we go is like here's this temporary entrance and I kid you not a story it looked like about a story high of makeshift like temporary wooden steps going up to this temporary entrance and there's a wrought iron arch and it looks like it's just kind of freestanding and I'm like, oh, and the whole dream just vividly came back to me. And it totally just, I, I, everything in me said, we're not going in this place. We're not going. So we had driven around for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, trying to find a decent parking spot. And so uh, she texted the group and said, we're, we're, we're going to head back out to suburbia <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go to XYZ restaurant. You're free. Please feel free to come. Um, my knees are just not up to this. And my knees aren't great either. So um, that's what we said. And a couple of them did come and meet us out there. But um, a few of them powered through it, went to the restaurant, walked blocks, whatever, got there. I think I think they had a good time. We had, an, we had a pretty good time too, except... The night was really kind of ruined for me because it just, I was nauseous and I, a little dizzy and I just felt really sick. Like I, I don't know, just a really awful feeling. And um, so that's what happened to me. Have you guys ever had an experience like that? I don't think I've ever had anything quite that spot on. Oh, well, I'm here. I survived <laughs> and on to doing more mundane things. Um, I was in here in the studio working on this very project and I had my earbuds in. I was just really in the zone and I heard what I thought was the knock on the door and I didn't hear another knock. So I went back to it and I heard it again. So I went to the front door and my neighbor was standing out there and I opened the door and he said, 
you might want to go look out the back. So I went and looked out the back. We were having some wind, um, not tornadoes. We don't, we haven't really been hit with any tornadoes right in the specific area where I'm in for a long time. But we do get like these micro bursts. Anyway, it took out five sections of our fence, three in the back, three on the very back and three on the side that we share with the neighbor who came over. And he said his wife was um, out on their patio and he was in the kitchen and he just heard her shriek and thought, what in the world happened? So he went to see and um, she was standing outside, I guess, in their on their patio when uh, when it hit and blew our fence into their flower beds. They were really nice about it. And I felt really bad. They had something hanging on it. You know how people hang things on the fence to that are decorative. Anyway, that broke because it was ceramic. And um, anyway, they were very good sports about it. We, my husband and the two kids got the fence out of their yard and we're hopefully next week we'll have a new fence. Uh, we were debating on whether or not we even wanted to replace the fence because it's, you know, we got it when the kids, well, we got it before my younger one was even born and just so we could be out and back with the kids and not worry about the same things that I don't want to worry about now, like somebody's pet getting in our yard or, you know, the other thing is everyone's real social. So they have parties and barbecues. So it's nice if we're out there, we're not watching their party. They're not watching our party. So yeah, we decided to go ahead and, and replace that privacy fence. And hopefully next week we will have a new fence if everything goes according to plan. And in the meantime, um, I'm just being very creative here doing this project the next videos are probably going to be of me working in these sketchbooks i've got four of them going at the same time um, this is the one that i recorded the preparation of each page and the next videos will be of me working in these various sketchbooks. The one thing I want to say is it's not linear. It's you don't just do one page and it's complete and you move on to the next page. This is a back and forth kind of project where you're working on one page and then you stop for a little while and you go work on another page and you incorporate things from the last page into the next page and so on so it's going to be like that and i really want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and hopefully you were doing some art while you were watching me or listening to me and um you'll come back and and see what i'm doing on these ne in the next evolution of this project and in the meantime, let's flip through and see what they all look like. There's one sort of structured page, but the rest of them are, oh, I had so much fun with just splattering and, and moving through all that wet paint and making marks with it. And all the exaggerated cauliflowering, that's going to be a lot of fun to work with. And I don't know, maybe I was thinking about the neighbor's dog. <laughs> on this part. I have no idea, but um, it's going to be fun to work on. And if you guys don't have expensive paints and stuff, uh, you could straight up use praying or Crayola watercolors for this. Just make sure you get it nice and um, um, strength, a strong concentration. Anyway, we'll see you in the next video, you guys. Bye and thanks a lot. We'll see you later.